What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and I hope everyone had a fantastic Labor Day weekend, uh, spending time with your loved ones or doing whatever it is you like to do. I know I did. Haven't recorded. Uh, I didn't record yesterday and um, now I am going to record following the Labor Day weekend and got some big decisions to make. Uh, we're still in somewhat of a need for a pitcher. Um, like I've mentioned in most episodes here recently, we have the pitching in the minor leagues to make it happen. It's just a matter of do we want to call them up and rely on rookies. Um, missed out on Mr. Anglin in our last episode. Apparently went with the cheaper offer. Is what it is. Nothing we can do about that. I have come across one player in free agency that I am tempted to make an offer at um, and that's it's not a pitcher so that's kind of why I'm hesitant because um, I don't really need him but he does provide a certain thing that we need and that's Mr. Cam Collier he does two things for us he gives us a lefty in the lineup and he also gives us power uh, his lowest home run total was 17 home runs back in 2032. It was just an off year, it seemed. Every other year, he's hit 25 or more. Um, last year, coming off a great season, arguably one of his better seasons in his career. So I don't, while I don't expect him to repeat that, I think that uh, you know 25 to 30 home runs is not out of the question. And he is a very popular player. And provides a solid defense um, in multiple places on the infield and in the outfield. So it's it's, it's tempting. Um, I'm thinking about it. He is wanting 13.8 over two years. I, I think that's obviously a little high. That's why no one's got him yet. Um, he is 31 years old. Going to be... I have be 31 for this whole season. So I think he's still kind of in that safe zone. And he's only won a two-year contract. So it's not completely unreasonable. It might be something where I can do like an option year and really only commit to him for one year. I do have the funds to pull together to make an offer of like 11 12 $13 million. I don't think that's an issue. Um, it's tempting. And I am debating it. It's a little, little older than I typically want to go for. But still going to be 31 throughout the year so i think it's possible that uh, he maintains his current profile and hopefully produces um just don't know yet i i um my head's kind of all over the place on him it might be a good idea it may not i need to kind of come through the minor leagues and see what we got we're loaded kind of on outfielders uh we do need infielders he does play third base i imagine we could probably teach him shortstop and second base and he could kind of do it all for us so i'll uh come back to him but that is one guy that is that is on my mind and some other trade options um i did send it ahead since the last episode just a little bit we are one day away from preseason beginning and it is February 1st so I think we ended the episode on the 25th of January I've just been kind of looking at trades and things like that so I've been naturally just simming ahead getting extra shopping options that the game gives you um, so naturally got it to February uh, one recent development is Mr. Kevin Herman who we got in a trade from Los Angeles last year and uh, didn't really play a lot for us last year. Played in 78 games. Um, nothing crazy. Only hit 230. Definitely didn't do as much as what we his profile, I feel like, suggests he could do. Um, played so solid defense and stuff like that for us. But uh, recent development is that he uh, was driving his car and in bad weather and slid off the road and wrecked his car and has a concussion that is going to put him out for essentially the whole season 
and you will be gone for nine months. So that will immediately put us into a need for obviously an outfielder for the whole season. Um, so another reason why Collier may not be a bad option. Um, look, looking through um, outfielders, you know, the, there's options there. Obviously, the one that steps out is Mr. Luis Castillo. I mean, he's ready. We know he's ready. He's going to come up. So that's an obvious choice, and I, that's going to happen. It was going to happen anyways. I was going to find a way to put him on the roster. More than likely, it would have been as a dh but uh, you know now it's gonna be an everyday probably outfielder um there's also eric guy not quite ready uh just finished a year in double a did awesome so we're gonna move him up to triple a and uh, hopefully can um develop that bat kind of a little bit more hopefully we can maybe get a little bit more potential out of him but it'd be a respectable bat and he's going to play plus defense we're going to play him uh, we're going to mandate that they play him in like left field and and right right field we'll force start him but most importantly he's a lefty and so he's going to do a lot for us and we're excited about him but he's just not ready and then you have i mean you got this guy but he's still an a ball Double-A, Alvaro Vega, you know, we've been waiting on him to kind of produce or develop, and it's come along here in the recent years, so he's going to get another shot at double-A, but he's almost 23 years old, so we got to get something out of him quickly. Uh, but he didn't quite do well in very short 29 games in double-A, but uh, yeah, he split some time between double-A and high-A last year, but he's just not ready. So we really have, you know, that one outfielder that is ready, and that's Luis Castillo. And that kind of puts us back into a position, you know, where it's uh, we don't have any depth there. I mean, we have Aguilar, Flores, Volks, and Davis. Um, you know, so you have four outfielders, but, you know, that kind of forces our hand a little bit. And, uh, yeah, so... We gotta make some decisions. Castillo's probably gonna come up. If I had to, if I had to guess, he's gonna be on the opening day roster, whether it's in the outfield or a DH. Um, I did kind of forget about uh, Volx there, but uh, I could put Volx as DH since uh, his fielding isn't as good. So, got some decisions. Um, we'll see. We will see what happens. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where my head's at. I, I need, a, I need an outfielder now and also need pitching. So I just think that right now pitching is what we have plenty of in AAA and can can go down and get someone. We just kind of are pivoting more towards an outfielder, which we had plenty of, and now all of a sudden we have to have them all in the major leagues. So it's just funny how this game changes quickly and your needs change within a span of an injury or two. <laughs> but that's the life of the GM, I guess. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get to the preseason, and I want to see if uh, Collier's price tag drops any. Also, one, one note uh, before we get to seeing if Collier's contract demands have changed. Uh, got a lot of ads I have to do in AA and triple a um currently on those rosters there's 15 players and 12 players respectfully i have got to do some additions and a lot of those players are pitchers so i have sent out a ton of minor league contracts and just kind of waiting on uh answers i shouldn't say a ton i've gotten a couple of contracts that were accepted now i still have six more that uh are pending they favor the offer um, what i do with that is whenever i, I want depth i just dem sort it by demand here and like there is no demand so that means that they'll take a minor league contract and then i kind of sift through to see if there's any like two star full two stars or like two and a half star players and then whenever i find them like mr simi stevenson um, I'll kind of look around, see what they have here. Don't really like his personalities. 
Uh, so sometimes I'll offer them a contract, sometimes I won't. But in this instance that or this instance that I don't need pitching, and I'm not gonna take on that personality, then I'll just kind of move on. But I just kind of do it like that. I don't know how you guys do it, but just wanted to show you what I do for depth. It just makes it quick and easy. I go through the roster, see what kind of positions that I need, and then I'll sort it like this just for minor league contracts to fill in for depth. Here's another one. Again, don't need pitching. Doesn't have good personalities. Um, could be decent for me in like double A, but uh, I don't need him because he's pitching. Those rosters are full. So that's what I do. I don't know if that's the easy way to do it. I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but that's kind of how I feel depth. And then if I need to fill depth on like the low A or high A rosters, which I usually don't, I usually fill that from my um, rookie ball teams. But uh, if they're performing badly, I'll go and get like one and a half, two star players down here and I'll fill them as well. And, and that's just what I do. So makes it somewhat quick and painless and thoughtless in a way like I just have to know what positions I need so uh, yeah I just wanted to throw that note out there there's a lot of holes that we have to fill and the GM life never ends uh, but let's go ahead and take a quick look at Mr. Collier see if he is available Ooh, did he get taken it's not ideal man if he got taken in one day that's gonna be unfortunate he did oh man i'm missing out 12 and a half okay i mean i probably should have negotiated that was my fault that's just a rookie mistake throw him out i should have threw him out a low ball offer and, and see if he would take it um Let's just see what they want. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, oh, well, that's unfortunate. Rookie mistake right there. Don't ever do that. If, you, if you're interested in a guy, just throw him a low ball offer. Don't make him mad, but throw him an low ball offer, and then that'll tell you if he's negotiating with anyone and if you need to get serious or not. But I had one day. I figured the preseason day wouldn't make a difference, and sure enough, it did. So... We'll move on and continue to look for replacements here. And I do want to highlight uh, a, a viewer, and I'm so sorry I forgot who it was that commented. It was several videos ago, weeks ago, but uh, I was struggling with schedules and, and the way I had to do this playthrough with building the team the way I did it with the minor leagues first and then I eventually added the major league team four or five years later um, it's been some weird funky things with the schedules and then we expanded again and for that one season and then the schedules were all messed up and we only played like 140 something games so since then I've had a couple of issues where I my schedules weren't right and I had to basically regenerate the schedule uh, and I was going through basically looking through the calendar to make sure I had 116 62 games uh, and I and I was counting them and then I would just kind of pick a couple other teams and make sure that they had a pretty full schedule but a viewer highlighted that I could do that easily from the actions tab up here and so I just want to show you guys what that looks like uh, if you come into your league settings and you're if you're doing like an expansion franchise and stuff like that, we have to put in new teams and make sure that they're in the schedule and you generate the schedule. Every season I go through this now because I've had this issue twice where the schedule wasn't 162 games. So every season when it hits the preseason, one of the first things I do is I come in here and I check the schedules. And the easy way to do this is in your league settings, go to league settings, go to edit, edit schedule. And then you're going to come into this screen, and that's going to be opening day right here. So the Bay Bears are right there. We're playing the Tampa Bay Rays, and uh, it's at 7.05. So that's opening season or opening day for the season. But if you want to see the full season and what every team has, you come in here and you go to Actions and Report and just 
do the report evaluation and then it'll pop up a screen that tells you exactly how many games the teams are playing and I would click that but um, when it does that it exit out of the game and pulls up a online website screen so when I do that and I'm recording it screws things up so I'm not gonna do that and I'm gonna just show you guys where to click once you click that the screen will pop up it literally tells you how many home games how many away games how many actual games it tells you division games it tells you everything you want to know super simple way to make sure everybody has the right amount of games and your schedule is right so just wanted to share that information with you guys a viewer mentioned it and I cannot remember who that viewer is but shout out to you um, appreciate the comment learn something new every day I did not even know that existed and then the com the comment informed me and now I use that every year so I appreciate the, the, the feedback guys and um, if I learn new things I'll let you know but that was a game changer for me all right uh, I found a trade and a trade that we need to do and honestly it's just time to cut the cord with one of our players and that is second baseman Gunnar Sechka, really just our middle infielder, kind of backup player. Uh, we have him on the team just because he has a captain personality, uh, but really just hasn't had any significant success or just really anything of significance in the major leagues. He's played with us for three straight seasons. Uh, he's got one season where he had a 1.0 war every other season was a negative war or last season was a 0 0.04 like he's not productive he's purely on the team for captain personality stuff um, he's not hugely popular uh, he's well known locally but you know nothing nationally he might ding us a little bit in our fan interest I don't know but I did mention that we need a uh, outfielder. Um, and before we look at the outfielder, like one other note was Sechka, like we're paying him $2.6 million and he's got arbitration still. And he's due to get $4 million. So he's getting really expensive for absolutely no reason. Like we aren't playing him enough to pay him $4 million or 2.6 for that matter. So couple things here need to get him off the books and he's not productive so and we also need an outfielder so I found Steve Tyree absolutely nothing about him stands out as like oh man great fine but he's an acceptable bat and arguably a better bat than Sechka's uh, acceptable speed not nearly as good speed as Sechka but acceptable and he plays a solid corner outfield uh, doesn't play good in center field but we can we can work with that uh, we can play left field and right field well so not a bad player um, one year older he's also a left-handed hitter so that's huge for us and he's currently making 2.2 million dollars and he's due to be a free agent at the end of this year so he's not going into um, arbitration again however the Toronto Blue Jays are willing to take that contract that he currently has and retain 100% of it so we would get Sechka's contract back and that would give us 2.6 million dollars extra and basically get this player for free in our minor league organization um, he is out of option years so he's going to go to our minor league organization but if he does come up, we're going to have to keep him you know, or get rid of him. So he will be there purely as depth, and we will push that button when we only need to. But it's good to have a guy that has major league experience and has a respectable major league stats and ratings. So it would be a lot better if he had options, but it doesn't, and it is, it is what it is. So... Um, the Blue Jays are willing to take this. They have plenty of money, and they're willing just to get rid of him so they can rebuild. 
I don't know what they're going to do with Sechka as far as rebuilding, but that's not my problem. <laughs> I don't have to worry about the Blue Jays. I just have to worry about the Bay Bears. Um, but they're willing to take it, and we're willing to give it to them. So we're going to go ahead and complete this trade and put Tyree on our AAA team. And as expected, we did take a ding with uh, our fan interest. It was 65. It's 64. We ended the season last year with 64, so we're still right where we were. Not a big deal. Um, we did get $2.6 million, though, so huge for us. Now we're up to $8 million, and that's with me stashing money away. Um, I have $30 million in player development. I usually sit that around 25 and then in scouting, we're at we're maxed out at 27. So I have money stashed, most importantly, in player development. And I might leave that there or I might up it. So we'll see. I might up our draft budget, too, if I don't do this, do with do anything with the $8 million. Uh, still a lot of time between now and spring training to get free agent players. Um, but we will keep fast forwarding here and see what what's available and what maybe trades come up. And now that preseason has begun and we're a few days into preseason, I've checked back with the trip or with the free agents that are not looking for any money, and uh, I found Dylan Beavers, who is 34 years old, rightfully so, but as you can see, a very respectable profile for an outfielder. Um, that could definitely going to provide more depth for us and uh, yeah is willing to just sign a minor league contract so we offered him a minor league contract and uh, see what he says but not going to complain about that find that's some of the gems you can find as you get closer to uh, spring training and when I say gems I mean old free agent gems that can provide great depth for you in the knee in a you know in a pinch you can call them up and the calendar has turned to march and just wanted to update you guys in the development lab there's three days left in the lab uh, we currently have a 50 percent on track or better rating uh just like we did last year so we have uh, Luis Castillo and Juan Cisneros on track to complete their programs. And Chris Dubose and Eric Guerra are also on track to complete their programs. While Jesus Aguilar, uh, Carl Medina, Diomni Blake, Arbalke, and Bobby Marcel. Serio are all frustrated and or struggling. So uh, another mixed bag. We will see if it stays at that. So four, that should be good. And four, that will not be good. Hopefully the struggling one doesn't go down in his abilities. But we will see. I just wanted to update you guys before we hit spring training. And it is opening day of spring training. Before we get to the spring training schedule and like getting that completed and ready for opening day, I want to take a couple of minutes to just take a look at some of the players that we've had in the past and see where they are now and, um, you know, how we fear or fared without them. Um, so. Most notably, I'll go straight to it, Mr. Josh Leeson. Uh, you guys remember we couldn't get this guy healthy for nothing. Huge prospect, but pitched a total of one inning in the major leagues for us. We waited for three or two straight seasons of ending any our season-ending surgery uh, before we even got to opening day. He was supposed to be a starter for us. He comes back. Stamina goes from like 55 to 35. Can't start. He wants to still be a starter, but can't. And he was costing us $13, $14 million at the time. And it was just not worth it. Uh, so we did trade him to the Los Angeles Dodgers. And last year, he actually looks like he was healthy. Um, he played in 46 games. 
was a 3.04 ERA and 28 saves. So he was the closer, and he was paid $13 million, and now he's getting $15 million. $15 million. So we had a really good contract on him. Um, however, I will say for a closer, I don't think that's a good contract. Um, I could be wrong. You guys can disagree with me there, but we signed him on a long-term contract as a starting pitcher, and we just never could get him healthy. Uh, so he had a good season last year. Uh, looks like he sprained his ankle and was out for four weeks. But other than that, uh, he was he was healthy, so he missed a month out of the season. Um, but as you could see, like that was just torn labrum, torn labrum, torn elbow ligament. So we just three straight years we had to get rid of him, and we're glad we did because he's a bullpen guy now, making thirteen million dollars. So really, really tough to to work around that as a team. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Jose Cornell. Now uh, we had him for a long time, and. Um, just kind of consistently got worse, but uh, he's had a turned out to had a decent ish career. Um, been very consistent, thirty to thirty two starts every single year, and kind of in that three to four mid four range for his ERA. Uh, and he has been with Miami and uh, Milwaukee since he left us. But approaching the end of his career, I would assume at thirty two, almost thirty three years old. But that is. Uh, our greatest loss at a six war, so I, I consider that a, a win. Um, yeah, that's the worst we've lost. Um, all right, so a couple other guys that were we had, I will bring up some older guys. Darnell Sandin pitched quite a few years for us, and we signed him as a minor league signing and just came up and provided really valuable innings. And to be honest with you, his ratings have not changed much. Uh, he did well last year, too. 3.7 ERA and 11 starts and 34 total innings. So, um, has played well since he left us, but it's been a long time since he left us. Let me go back and look. Yeah, 2032 when he left us. Um, the very next year, he bounced around between Houston and Milwaukee, and then um, now is was at Pittsburgh, and now is at Toronto. So. Good to see him still playing. Um, AJ Bilbo, we had him for a while too. Lost him in 2032. He was our closer. You can see he's really gone downhill. Um, in AAA now, just trying to make his way back to the majors. But it looks like his days are are over. But we, we did have a good time with him um, as our closer. Um, another couple, Jorge Rivera, not so recently. Uh, last year we was the first year without him, and we didn't want to pay the arbitration level that he was going to make or the demand, I believe was the demand that he wanted for his contract, and we had our reasons. Um, but last year proved to be a good decision for us to not take it. And, and give him the money he wanted. He only hit 218, 29 home runs, 82 RBIs, had a .07 war. So definitely not worth $8 million. And so far, it's been a good decision. He's 34 years old. We imagine that'll probably be a similar season this year that he had last year. Um, we've talked about Juan Cardenas. Uh, Greg Ricks was our man he was a, a starter for us for what six seasons um, last year was his first year without us uh, our first year not with us we just didn't want to pay the money he was asking for for a four-ish ERA uh, guy you can definitely count on for 33 to 30 to 33 starts a year uh, but last year was 10 and 11 4.62 ERA and 33 starts so not great uh, definitely not worth the 10 million dollars that he is getting with the braves um so sad to see him go but seems like it was the right call he his time is is approaching the end of his career i would imagine um we'll go one more uh, we talked about charles bradley um did not have him last year but 4.73 ERA in 31 starts so good to 
probably not get him as as well. He is a free agent, uh, so I will look at that. I believe I looked at it earlier. He was wanting too much money. Now he's only wanting two point two million dollars. So I might offer him. Oh, let's do this. Minor league contract worth the major league minimum. Let's see what he says. Oh. He's looking for major league deal, not a minor league deal. So we'll see what he says. And if he's willing to accept a minor league deal as like a optional starter for us to bring up, then I'll consider it. Uh, but just wanted to kind of touch in on some players that we've had in the past and uh, see where they're at now. I don't really do that a lot. Uh, I'll do that for you guys that uh, follow this regularly. Um, I'll start doing that more often every year or so. I'll, I'll check in on the guys that we've had in the past, um, especially as we get longer in this playthrough and, and accumulate a lot more players that we're eventually going to have to move on from. Uh, but yeah, now it's time to get to spring training. All right, we have begun spring training. Um, played the first game, lost it one to two or two to one to Houston. Um, just want to check in with you guys. I have completed the development lab, and it was a little bit better than we thought it was. It looks like we got five of the eight players as somewhat of an improvement, um, and no one regressed. So, Luis Castillo's. Bat speed program was successful, so that is good. Um, resulted in a measurable increase in bat speed and thus a clear improvement in his power. So that is great. His power is at 65 now. Like This dude is 100% going to start. I have to find a spot for him. It's obvious it's going to happen. There's just no way around it. He's got to play. Um, Juan Cisneros' quality of contact program uh, was successful as well. Um, so good to see that. Uh, he is still developing, uh, but we're trying to get the, the, the Babbitt, which did develop, and then his contact uh, a little bit higher because he's struggling getting getting on base. And we don't think he's ever going to be a huge, you know, gap power guy or, you know, avoid strikeouts and things like that. But he does have power potential and he does have contact with the Babbitt potential. So he has a really unique profile that, that we like and we're trying to maximize as we can. But he's still in high A ball. Um, very good chance that he goes to double A ball at some point in the season, if not to start the season. Um, but 21 years old, still got time with him. All right, next, Bobby Mercurio. Uh, no improvement on his uh, pitch, secondary pitch improvement. Diomni Balke secondary pitch improvement program was successful. So um, he looked like he worked on his curveball and he had a clear improvement. I was hoping it was going to be his changeup, uh, but really can't control that, I don't think. And... Um, you know, at this point, uh, that changeup may not develop, but I think he could be a, a clear bullpen type of guy. I don't know if he's ever going to develop into a starter, but uh, definitely could provide us with, with uh, some very useful and valuable innings in our bullpen. And uh, he was in Double A last year. I'll probably start him in Triple A this year and see see what he does. But just another arm in the organization that's depth as of right now carl medina quality of contact no improvement uh, just trying to get the contact out of this guy he's a middle infielder uh, with great speed good defense and could be useful for us in the future um, just trying to maximize that as much as we can but unfortunately he did not improve uh, chris debose debose um, did improve his control so uh, very good to know that he is getting better there in that control area was in low a last year we moved him up to high a i think it's obvious since at this over this off season he has done a lot of improving here so we probably need to minimum start him and double a i'm gonna go ahead and do that um, but excited about him he's a pretty solid little arm for a fifth fifth round pick could be a, a borderline starter for us, if not a very good arm out of the bullpen. Maybe, you know, 
a setup guy. We'll see. He's got some movement potential and home run route allowed rating is higher than um, than we have in the bullpen for the most part. I uh, just need this final things to kind of develop. I wish that stuff rating was a little bit better, but can't have everything. Eric Guerra, his uh, control program was successful, so good to see that. Another guy that's a borderline starter, if not um, a starter potential. I don't really go with three pitch pitchers a lot, but I'm not opposed to it considering where we're at in our are in our position for starting pitching, but um, would like that control to prove a little bit more. He did work on it, so that is good. And uh, if that changeup finishes a developing, he could have pretty pretty solid stuff. Definitely a good arm in the bullpen, and potentially a starter. And then last but not least is Hey Zeus Aguilar. Put him on a quality of contact program. No improvement there. I'm just trying to get that improved a little bit but like i said whenever i put him in there he was younger so i have no idea if it has any um relevancy if that's why he doesn't improve there's been talks on the forums like i mentioned that the younger ones don't improve or have a very low success rate so definitely had a low success rate here um Guerra's older at 24 he was successful DeBose had an outstanding performance on his control. Uh, so he's 22. Um, Medina, no improvement. 21. Balke, 23. Bobby is 23. Cisneros, 21. Castillo 23 so I don't know if there's any coincidence that Aguilar being the youngest one and under 20 that he didn't improve or if there is something to that in the forums like they're talking about so I'll try it again maybe next year and see if there's another below 20 year old that uh, I can put in this program and doesn't improve and I will report back to you guys but right now maybe there's something to that uh, but anyways, just want to let that let you guys know that, and uh, let's go ahead and continue with spring training. And it looks like we have encountered our first big blow in spring training injuries here on March 14th. Jonathan Myers, who had pitched for us last year and did an outstanding job, 25 games of 41.2 innings. Uh, we got him in a trade from Baltimore. But he had a 2.38 ERA with us, which is phenomenal. Um, was really hoping to get another year like that out of him. But it looks like, for the most part, he is going to be shut down. He tore his meniscus in his knee. He'll be out for four to five months. So he will be back, oh, what is that, like September, August, September time frame. So it's going to be, it's going to be close. Looks like he'll be back just towards the end of the season, so hopefully his season is not lost. But uh, sad to see him go, and uh, hopefully that's the only real serious injury we get besides Mr. Herman, which that was preseason. We did have another injury, Amari Bynum. He's only out for a few weeks, though, with a herniated disc. So um, not the end of the world. He also is more or so like a death guy in the triple a uh, but yeah fingers crossed that's the the worst injury we get and it looks like we have another injury to our pitching staff um most notably our closer jeff middleton who has strained a hamstring and will be out two months also his injury proneness has been changed to wrecked so not ideal. He was the one reliever that we locked up long term. A very, very team friendly contract. Three point five million dollars. Most expensive is four point five, and he gets that for the next six or seven years. Um, five years actually after this year. Uh, we do have two opt outs in twenty forty and twenty forty one. I think it's obvious time to like maybe see what. I can get from him in the trade market uh, just because he's wrecked. We just, you just don't, you can't rely on that. Uh, and I don't like to have that on my team. Nothing against him. He's been 
done he's done well for us. Last year his ERA was extremely elevated, but he still had almost forty saves. Um, so tough to see him be hurt for a couple months, um, but I think we can um, survive that and uh, maybe look to move him during those two months. But we'll see. We'll see where the team's at, and uh, we'll go from there. Also, we are not doing so well in spring training. We are 8 and 11. Um, so, definitely not lighting the world on fire. Our offense is struggling mightily. Uh, the only one really not struggling is, surprise, surprise, Danny Fouts and Vicente Jasso. Um, Isaac Cardenas is also doing well. But everyone else is struggling. I haven't even looked at the you know, the depth players to see where they're at. Um, but it's been a real struggle bus. Um, our pitching hasn't been good either. So just struggling all around and hoping that this is just a spring training funk and everybody kicks it in gear for the regular season. All right, we have completed spring training and it wasn't the prettiest. Uh, we finished 12 and 14. Um, good news is some of our guys really started hitting better down the stretch and we started pitching better. So hopefully uh, we were starting to click as the spring training wore on and the, the guys got more into um, the form that they're used to for the regular season. The only player that really just struggled the whole time, there was two two hitters that really struggled. That was Tim Vox and Mason Davis. They both have averages below 200 for the spring and really had nothing to show for it. Mason hit one home run with five RBIs. Tim hit two home runs with seven RBIs, so nothing crazy. Uh, Simbrat had a 2.35 ERA, um, so that was encouraging. But other than that, nothing crazy jumped off the page. We do need to figure out who's going to be our closer and um, who's going to be our fifth starter. I think I already know who that's going to be. But uh, yeah, I'm going to end the episode right there. It is April 4th. We will pick it up on opening day 2036 in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, when we come back, we will meet the 2036 Mobile Bay Bears and get the quest for a sixth straight winning season underway and another playoff berth, we hope, underway as well. Um, so come back in the next episode and let's get get the show on the road for the 2036 season. Uh, but again, thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a good one.